All right, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to generate a decentralized bank account, which exists in a financial system that extends beyond the reaches of our current national financial systems, um, and also extends beyond the way that we currently facilitate international transactions and that type of thing. This bank account is essentially global by default and there is no such thing as foreign exchange in this uh, new decentralized system because everything is considered global by default and so there isn't really this concept of transacting between nations it's just transacting on earth essentially and it all falls under the same category in terms of the technology facilitating those transactions so we're going to be installing two extensions in Chrome. Um, it will work the same in Firefox or Safari or any other Chromium based browser like Brave browser. Um, and the reason that we're going to be installing two applications is the one MetaMask is responsible for facilitating our global bank accounts, if I can put it that way. This is legal, by the way, just to mention that. Um, and the other application is just going to be helping us with our password security. Um, you could skip the last pass one if you are like good with information security or have an understanding of it, um, or at least know how to set strong passwords. Um, but for everybody who is and maybe not so great with information security, I would definitely recommend using LastPass. And I'll explain what that is. So, yeah, the first thing that I would like to go through, and this, it won't really be a long thing. I know it looks like there's a lot of information here. It's actually very simple, and I'll explain it. Um, so this is just an example of a password that we would typically think of as um, being complex in nature. Feel free to pause the video and read this whole thing if you'd like to, but I'm just going to give a quick overview of it, and I'll discuss all the most important parts of it. So this is just a password that we would typically think looks difficult um, to hack, essentially. And um, the second slide qu quantifies the amount of entropy in the password here. And basically entropy just means how many different possible combinations of this password there could be, um, at least in the context of this information security slide. Um, and so we can see here that this password is actually pretty easy to guess using a computer and it tells us here three days at a thousand guesses per second would allow us to crack this password and then the third little uh, pane here is showing us that uh, it's difficult to remember right so it's easy to crack with a computer but it's difficult to remember even though it looks like it would be difficult to crack okay and then in the second row here we have what looks like a much easier password to crack um, but we see here that it would take 550 years at a thousand guesses per day um, or a thousand guesses per second same there sorry um, to crack this password so 550 years versus three days um, and the main reason for that is because of the length of this password it's significantly longer than this one and length is an exponent if you're trying to um, actually do the math behind figuring out how many different um, combinations there are in a given character set and a given length of a password. So um, just simply put, it's important for you to have a long password rather than a password that looks complicated. And so there's this idea of how you can just string a couple of words together, um, preferably more than four though, I would say, and by virtue of just putting a couple of unrelated but simple words together, you can end up having a much more secure password than something that looks really difficult. And then he just shows an example of how he remembers this correct horse battery staple password. Um, and then the ultimate sentiment of this comic was through 20 years of effort, we successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. And so going forward into this, 
when we create our LastPass account and we set our master password, just keep this in mind. Try to make a password that is longer rather than more complicated looking. I would recommend maybe throwing a number and maybe a capital letter and a special character into the password, but if you aren't going to do that, the main takeaway from this is just rather set a longer password, okay? Like put a couple of words together, maybe more than a couple, maybe like five or six, and then that will be a good password, okay? So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to install LastPass here, and we'll first need to create an account. I'm using a throwaway email address just for the purpose of this tutorial. So there we see, put in our email, that would be your email. Um, and then what we're gonna do is generate a password. So I'm just generating a password on my other browser here, using LastPass in my other browser, but this is where you would do the words together, um, string a couple of words together, try to make them unrelated, try to make them things that people wouldn't guess that you would string together, and most importantly, make it something that you can remember. And the idea behind LastPass is that you would only ever need to remember that one password going forward into the future. So now that we've set that password, I'm gonna sign up, and then I'm going to install the LastPass extension. You can log into LastPass without using the extension, uh, just through their website itself, but um, it will work out a lot better if you install the extension. Okay, so now we have the extension here. Now I can log in to my account. So um, here is my email address. And I'm just taking my password from my other screen. Okay, then this should turn red. Then we can click on, okay, this, it opens this How LastPass Works tab. You can just close that. And then go to Open My Vault. You just click on LastPass here, then Open My Vault. Now we're gonna add an item, okay? And let's select Password. For the name, let's put in MetaMask. Username, we can also uh, make that MetaMask because you don't actually use a username for MetaMask. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this um, LastPass button, then generate secure password. And then we're gonna wanna set this to like quite a high number, preferably something more than 64. Um, this does seem to be lagging a little bit, so I'm just gonna give it some time to respond to my clicks. Okay, so that took a little bit long, sorry about that. Um, I don't know what's happening, but uh, 98 is fine. Prefer if it lets you click in here and set it, then set it to like anything above 64 really is good. Make sure that you have all characters selected and um, all of these selected over here, all these character types. Then to the left of this uh, refresh button, you there's actually another button here which will copy that password. So I'm gonna click on that to copy it. And then I'm gonna paste it in here into the site password. Now that will be the password that we use for MetaMask. And I'm gonna save that so that we have it here in LastPass. Okay, so now we can go ahead and set up our MetaMask account. So we're also gonna download this as an extension and we're gonna take the Chrome version or whichever version, um, whichever browser you're using, install that version. Okay, add that extension. 
some of the permissions that it asks for there may seem a bit concerning. Um, they are unfortunately required in order for it to be able to bridge your web sites that you visit to Ethereum, if it's an Ethereum application. Um, all of this code though is actually available publicly. Um, so it's all open source uh, and like there in that MetaMask extension, this is all the code that makes up this extension over here. So it is publicly visible. Um, people do audit it. Um, personally, I'm not concerned about that being a security vulnerability. Um, so yeah, just in case those permissions make you feel uncomfortable, I would not really recommend being made uncomfortable by that. There are a lot of other systems that we already use on a day-to-day -day basis that are significantly less secure than MetaMask. Um, yeah, so once we've installed the MetaMask extension over there, we'll get this page. Um, you can just click get started. If you have a seed phrase already, then you can use this import wallet feature, but most people watching this won't have a seed phrase. So we're gonna go to create wallet. Uh, I would just opt out of this and say no thanks. Okay, so now we need to set a password, okay? And that was the whole point of us using LastPass over here was that we don't need to remember this thing over here. But now we have a very secure password that we can use on MetaMask. So I'm gonna put that in there. Then we get to this part where it gives us a backup phrase. Now this backup phrase over here is what we would use to generate our wallet on a different device. So let's say somebody sends a dollar worth of cryptocurrency or something to your account on MetaMask. Um, and let's say that computer gets lost or destroyed or something, then you would use the seed phrase to regenerate that um, wallet on a new device. And at the point of regenerating it, you would also set a new password, okay? So some like a way that you can think of this is that the seed phrase exists essentially outside of your device itself, not in terms of where the information is stored, but in terms of where the information is relevant. So you would use the seed phrase on a new device to initialize your wallet on a new device, the same wallet on a new device. Um, this seed phrase is like what grows into your wallet, if I can put it that way. Um, and, but your password, on the other hand, for last part, I mean, for MetaMask would be irrelevant to the new device. So if you wanted to initialize your MetaMask wallet on a new device, you would use your seed phrase and then you would set a new password. So your password in this context is kind of what protects your seed phrase on this device. Okay. So what I'm going to do is copy this and I'm gonna put it into the notes section. If this was closed, then you can just click on this gear or whatever, that spanner thing and paste that here. And that is the seed to generate your wallet. And now we can go next. It's just gonna ask us to confirm that we did copy that down somewhere. And also make sure to click save when you paste the stuff here, the password and the notes. We don't wanna lose that. So hold, clap, renew. Okay, so now we've confirmed that we did store that somewhere and now we have a MetaMask account, okay? So that is it essentially. Now, if somebody wanted to send money to our decentralized bank account, we would copy this over here, uh, which is known as our public key or more specifically, actually, uh, technically correctly, this is our Ethereum address. Um, but colloquially, sometimes people refer to it as your public key. Um, and you can find it here as well. This is what you would share with people if they want to send money to this account, okay? On the other hand, never ever share uh, your seed phrase with anybody. Um, 
and never share what is known as your private key with anybody. Um, only your public key. If you ever see anybody asking for your private key, or if you see somebody trying to give you a tutorial and you end up having to click on something that says like reveal private key or something like that, just um, don't do it. Um, I'm also always available to help with any advice with this kind of stuff. Um, here, for example, we could reveal our seed words if we put our password in, um, and that would show us the, this phrase over here, essentially. So, yeah, now we've got MetaMask installed, we have LastPass installed. I'm going to log out of this stuff just for the purpose of showing how you would get back in. Okay, so now we're logged out of LastPass and we're logged out of MetaMask. Um, now let's say we wanted to get back into both of them. We would click on this and then we would need to put our master password in there. That's the long password with the words um, that we should remember. Um, so then we get back in here and then we have our seed phrase over there. This one we don't need to remember because LastPass is remembering it for us. And then we have our password over there. So what we could do is we could just right click over there, copy password, and then put it into MetaMask. And then log in, and there we're into our account again. So that's kind of how the loop works. Now, MetaMask will allow us to interface with any decentralized applications that are built on Ethereum and Ethereum is a decentralized virtual machine which allows people to build applications on top of it and those applications exist in this decentralized um, international supranational um, ecosystem where there are no governments facilitating any of the transactions or acting as intermediaries in any of the transactions so we can build, for example, decentralized social networks and that type of thing on top of Ethereum. And then we would use MetaMask to interface with those things. Um, to interact with any uh, decentralized um, application built on Ethereum, you do need a positive Ether balance. Um, just more than zero, essentially. It can be 10 Rand that will work. Um, but it needs to be more than zero because you pay for transactions on this decentralized machine using Ether. And an example of where one could purchase Ether in South Africa would be Luno. They call it Ethereum. Um, their terminology is wrong. I've spoken with them multiple times about this, but they're doing it for marketing purposes. Um, it's still a bad idea though because what you're actually purchasing here as a currency, what shows over here is Ether, um, and Ethereum is a decentralized virtual machine. Ether is the currency that you use to pay for computation on that decentralized virtual machine. So, yeah, I'm getting into things that are maybe beyond this tutorial, but um, all that's important is that now you have a decentralized bank account set up and you can start interacting with decentralized applications. So, yeah, I hope that that was not too much to take in. If anybody has any questions, then please just send me a message through wherever you would like. The best way to find me is usually to go to um, society0x.org and then you can click on join discussion over here. That will take you to a chat room that I frequent and keep tabs on. Um, but aside from that, if you already have my contact information in some other means, then just feel free to reach out and ask me any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your evening.